if I got a super strong tax incentives for solar, am I going to put them on my building? Probably. Like I, I'm going to put solar panels on my building. If I get some extra land, I'm going to put it on my extra land or I'm going to figure out a way to do it to get those massive tax benefits. So, Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer with me. I got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing, man? I'm doing excellent. How are you doing, Todd? I'm doing fantastic. Just another uh, beautiful sunny day, man. And uh, we are... Uh, we're in the midst of this presidential election that uh, it's like this never ending. It's, I feel like it's the groundhog days, right? It's just this never ending deal. I was hoping it would get off my social media feeds and all that kind of stuff. Nope. It's just going to continue <laughs> for a while here. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it won't be like a year 2000 where it just, uh, I think went into December of that year. Did it really? I think so. I, yeah. I remember that, but you know, I was in, uh, but the year 2000, I would have been in college. So I was yeah. like, yeah, I didn't care then. <laughs> I cared more about, uh, you know, chasing girls and drinking beer. So, um, yeah. So, so how, uh, anything new on, in, in your realm or? No, nothing new. I mean, uh, it's only been uh, two days since the last time we recorded a, a, a you know, a podcast together. So nothing yeah. new since then. Well, I got something new. I just closed mm-hmm. on a deal yesterday and it's a senior group home. So I'm, I'm really excited. It's got really strong potential for cash flow. Um, it's got it just organically, we can, uh, we can raise rents. Uh, I don't think we're going to force massive rent increases to these occupants just because, um, you know, I want happy, I want happy residents and uh, I don't want to crush people's financial um experience but it, and we're still getting we're getting good cash we're really great cash flow as it is so but over the you know over the course of the next few years we'll we'll bring rents closer to market and uh and just naturally we've got like about 20 percent that we can increase rents so we've got a pretty good runway here um and that's without rents increasing in the market uh you know, overall in general. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's going to be good. It's going to be fun. It's uh it's a new experience. So with new experiences always comes new challenges and we'll learn a lot along the way and hopefully not make too many critical errors, <laughs> hopefully just minor errors uh, that we can course correct quickly and learn from. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting new opportunity. It's got it's got an opportunity to, to actually double the size um, if, we, if we want to. So we're going to run it and operate it and see how things go. And then we can do a, a brand new build and double the size of the asset um, if we choose to. So we'll see. Yeah. And I used to manage group homes, as you know. So yeah, I can, I can tell you, it all comes down to as long as you have a good manager in place, it's gonna, yeah. the numbers are going to be good. We have, I think, I feel we have great managers in place right now and hopefully we can keep them and keep them happy and, and, uh, keep running the community as is, you know, that's, that's the the nice thing is we don't, we're not going to shake a lot of things up. We want to keep our current staff in place. We don't want to fire anybody. And, um, we don't feel like there's nothing, we didn't buy this with a bunch of operational deficiencies. We didn't buy this with a bunch of like massive value add upside where we have to come in and, and, and overhaul the, the units or, or bedrooms or, or anything like that. So the only, like I said, the only real thing that we can do is raise rents because they're under market value by 20%. And that's, that's a really good position to be in, in my opinion, especially on a new adventure. It would be different if this was something we've been doing for the last, you know, five years and we're, we were well versed in it. Um, then I'd feel a lot more confident if we came into a property that was more distressed and needed that. But this, this property is, it's got great ratings. Uh, people want to, people want to move in, you know, so we're, we're I'm excited about it. Excellent. Yeah. The numbers so, look great on it. So we'll see. <laughs> 
<laughs> to be determined, but hopefully, you know, I think it's, I think it's exciting. And it's, the other thing is, you know, uh, the average age of somebody coming into a facility like this is about 83 years old. As I was doing my research, you know, 83 years old, that means the baby boomers won't hit these houses for an additional eight years. And that's the first stretch of the baby boomers. Now, of course, some of them will, because that's the average age. Some people come in at, at 60, you know, but some people, you know, the average age would be in 83. So we're actually not going to hit this big baby boomer boom for quite a few more years. So if we're already looking strong, it's only going to, it should only get stronger over the next, you know, five, 10 years. Yeah. That, that's exciting as well. This, this, in my opinion, is a long-term uh, hold. You know, we keep it for quite a while um, and let it cash flow. It's a cash king. So that's yeah. what, that's, you know, I, I love, I love that. Uh, obviously I do the, the syndications and those are more, uh, not a flip, but, but that, that's kind of what it is. It's a multifamily flip. I mean, you're buying it, you're keeping it for, you know, anywhere between two to seven years. Uh, but the, uh, the, the kind of the idea, uh, the goal is to buy it, maximize your rents, maximize your NOI and then sell it. And, you know, that's great, but it's also nice to have some of these long-term holds that you hold on to for 10 plus years and you're not thinking about selling. Um, you're thinking about how can we maximize our operations at all times, but you're thinking about holding on to it and how it, it's going to continue to generate good, strong cash flow. So, um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for that. Yeah. And there's tremendous, uh, you know, opportunity with assisted living right now. So this yep. is a good time to buy. Yep. Agree. Um, so Matt, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we were going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, following the election at this point, while we're recording, it hasn't been called yet, but it pretty much looks like Biden is going to win. Um, and so what is real estate going to look like under Biden? And this is just our guess. You know, this is our opinion. Uh, yep. This is our projection. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Ah, po politics. Ah, it's <laughs> going to explode. Um, Look, like you said, it looks like there's probably a good possibility that Biden's going to win. Obviously, Trump still has a path to the to continue to stay in the White House, and and uh, likely there's going to be recounts, um, potential. Well, I think there's already lawsuits being filed, but so we'll see where that goes. But so likely this is going to fight on for a while, and probably won't find out for several, several months. I mean, maybe, maybe we won't even find out by January 21st when the new president's supposed to take over. We'll see. Um, I, like I said, like, I, I want this out of my inbox because, or by not my inbox, but my social media feed. I want, I, 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 yeah, like it's, I don't, I don't need to hear about the, all, about all the politics and the anger and the angst that it causes, but you know, Life moves on, right? Somebody's going to be our next president, whether it's Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Like we already said, it it's leaning towards Joe Biden. The, the path is fairly clear for him uh, at this point in time. It looks like uh, he's he's leading in uh, Arizona and he's leading in Nevada. And if he wins both of those, he's he's our next president. Um. So let's just talk about what it would look like under Joe Biden presidency, because we already kind of know a Trump presidency and where he is. And I think under a Trump presidency, you're going to see a lot of the same. Um, so you can kind of, you can kind of project, okay, what would, what would the tax policy be like with, with Trump? Well, with Biden, I think that's a little bit more of a, of a wild card because we don't know exactly how he wants to do things. We do know that um, there will be pressure. So the, so the Democrats have, it's interesting because the Democrats have, have actually lost some seats in, in, the, in the House to the Republicans, but the seats that they've lost have been the very kind of more, more centered Democrats. So the House 
as far as the Democrats have gotten, has actually gotten much more liberal, much, much more to the left, because that's who's kept power is the more, I don't want to say far left, but the, the farther to the left, they have actually kept uh, power and where the moderates have actually lost the power uh, in the house. Now the Senate, they were hoping to flip. It looks like they're not going to, looks like it's going to stay Republican controlled. Um, that one doesn't look like a lot of disruption. I think right now to date, they've gained one seat and it looks like they might actually uh, lose another seat. And so it'll be a net gain of zero, but either way, if they gain even two, it's not a flip. So I think, um, I think it'll be interesting because there's, there's a lot of, there's, there's people on the left who are going to try to push Biden to be more leftist, right? Farther to the left. I would say he's a fairly moderate Democrat, right? But People are going to try to influence them. You know, can they influence them with the House not gaining more Democratic control, which is actually gaining Republican control, and the the Senate not flipping? Like, can that happen? I think we're going to stay. My guess is we're going to stay fairly moderate still, um, as we've been for forever, right? I would say. My guess is his policies will be and his his presidency will look similar to what we've seen in the last couple Democratic presidents, right? What we saw with Obama, what we saw with Clinton. Um, I would I would venture to guess that we're going to see much of the same. Now, could we see some things that affect real estate investors potentially, right? There's been talk of you know, dismantling or changing the 1031 exchange. Let's talk about that. Like what happens if that happens, right? So what Matt, I'll, I'll let you talk. Can you tell everybody what a 1031 exchange is? And then 1031 what, do you, is what do you think would happen if that goes away? And then I'll put my thoughts into it. Yeah, 1031 is just a way to defer your capital gains taxes by uh, you know, reinvesting the proceeds from a sale of one property to you know, help purchase a, you know, a similar type property or properties. And then you, instead of paying the capital gains tax on the sale, you defer it until later and you can just essentially keep deferring it uh, for life uh, if you, you know, follow all the rules with it. And what happens uh, when you die is if you kept on deferring and then you die, you can pass it on to your heirs with no tax, right? There's the step up basis and then they pay no taxes if they want to sell it right away. Or even if they sell it in the future, the, the, the basis starts from when you die. So um, so that's a huge, huge advantage, obviously. Uh, now, do you eventually have to pay taxes if you completely liquidate? Yeah, you eventually do. But here's the thing, um, when we look at the velocity of our money, uh, we're able to, not pay those taxes if we 1031 and we can build, buy something bigger and, and better or we can continue to build that very quickly and now in the end we sell we have to pay a bunch of taxes back and that hurts and that sucks but if we didn't defer we couldn't have gotten to where we got so we actually create a lot more capital uh in the end so you know what would happen in your opinion if that goes away well, people would probably hold on to their properties for longer, I suppose. Um, you know, otherwise people will just pay the capital gains tax and just kind of uh, plan that as part of their underwriting. I, to be honest, though, I, with the Republicans main, likely maintaining uh, control of the Senate, I, I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon. You know, even if the House passes uh, that and Biden's in favor of getting rid of the capital gains. Uh, you know, Mitch McConnell's not going to let that uh, get through the Senate. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't think it's going away. I, I think uh, I think the only way this was going to be potentially damaging to real estate investors is if the Democrats swept the way that they were hoping to sweep, right? And and even that, even then, let's just say this ten thirty one somehow goes away. Let's just say it does. What's going to happen? Honestly, 
is it going to affect real estate? It will in the short term, in the long term, will it? Not really. Look, it just means you have to pay taxes on it. It actually potentially means that prices will go down in favor if more favorable because people are always willing to pay a little bit more with 1031. So if you've ever bid uh, been bidding against a 1031 investor, you're likely going to get beat on your bid. I I've never beat a 1031 investor and I've bid on properties many times where there's been a 1031 uh, buyer and they, they always win um, or they always beat me at least. I don't know if they always win, but they always beat me because they're willing to pay more. They're, they're okay with paying a little bit more, overpaying a little bit for a property uh, to satisfy their 1031 exchange. So, you know, uh, that stretches prices. And ultimately, if you stretch prices, it becomes diff more and more difficult to buy and, and cap rates, you know, compress and all that kind of stuff. So overall, if it, if it went away, but, it, but it, you know, there's some negatives to it, but there's actually some positives to it potentially too. So overall, life will go on if it went away. You know, it's, it's not the end of the world. What, what are some other things that, that Biden is trying to do or you think could potentially happen if he becomes president? And let's just say his wish list go, all goes through, right? Let's not, mm -hmm. let's not assume that Republicans are going to shoot it down. Let's assume it all goes through. Yeah, he wanted to increase taxes on people who will make over $400,000 a year. Yep. Well, let's talk real estate investors. How many real estate investors on paper to the government make over $400,000 a year? Uh, you know, that's the beautiful thing about real estate investing because you can, you know, on paper, you could be losing your shirt, but still yeah. making great cash flow. Uh, you know, yeah. Donald Trump is a great example of that. Uh, you know, he paid $750 in tax for a couple of years in a row there, as we all know. And, and but that's just because of the all of the tax benefits of real estate. Right, right. So, you know, let, let's just say that you know, the upper end does get taxed more. Let's say everybody gets taxed more even. Is it going to affect you? Sure, that would affect you if everybody does. But at least the upper end, you're not going to get, probably as a real estate investor, you're not going to get hit. Now, maybe you have an event where you sell a property and your income that year is really high. That's where you would get affected. Right. So if your income is one year because you sell a couple of properties or sell a property, you don't do a 1031 or 1031s go away. Would you get walloped that year? Probably. Right. But the rest of the remaining years or the years that there's no event like that, you're likely going to be able to write enough off to where you don't have to show 400 K in income. So probably a pretty good chance that you're going to be able to do that. And quite frankly, most business owners are going to be able to get away with that as well. The only people that are going to get smacked around by this additional tax, especially if it's truly 400 K or higher are going to be the wealthy, sorry, not the wealthy, the high paid people that have a job, not business owners, not real estate investors. It's, you know, the, the surgeon, the, you know, lawyer that's making 400 K plus a year that, that those are the people that are going to get hit. It's not going to be the business owners. You so. know, if anything, if we can improve our education to the, the public about real estate investing, there's going to be more of those high income earners uh, well, who would want too. to invest in real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got you got yep. a good point there. Now, now, the more they get taxed, the more they want to find alternatives to be able to reduce their taxable income, right? So likely it actually it actually spurs more investing. Yep, because if you have a W-2 job and you have some real estate, the tax benefits of your real estate kind of carry over into your earned income to reduce your tax liability for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there anything else that he's kind of said that makes you go, oh, that's going to affect real estate negatively? You know, like, yeah, he's talking about a lot of green incentives, uh, you know, to, and I think this is more of a, a general economic sort of thing, uh, where if we're getting away from, um, you know, carbon based, uh, you know, you know, fuels, then yeah. there's going to be a lot of infrastructure building for, uh, 
uh, you know, solar and wind power and things like that. So if you are investing in those, then those might become quite a bit more profitable. Well, and, and we talk about tax incentives, you know, what happens if we get really strong tax incentives for solar um, and, and other alternatives? Like, sure, if I got a super strong tax incentives for solar, am I going to put them on my building? Probably. Like, I, I'm going to put solar panels on my building. If I get some extra land, I'm going to put it on my extra land or I'm going to figure out a way to do it to get those massive tax benefits. So if there's this big push for the green initiative, that could benefit real estate. That could actually benefit real estate owners, I think, quite a bit if they want to take advantage of some of those um, opportunities that are, they're going to present themselves. So that's, that's, I think that's the key, right? If Biden becomes president, uh, is the world going to end? No. Are, are things going to go on? Yep. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to be mad and stomp our feet that our candidate didn't win if you voted for you, the other candidate? Or are you going to move on and you're going to actually take advantage of the situation at hand? For me, I'm going to move on. I'm going to take advantage of the situation at hand. You know, whether Biden or Trump wins, in my opinion, it doesn't affect me as a real estate investor. Um, now, would it affect me if, um, you know, it, it was a very left wing or right wing, um, you know, politician and also the House and the Senate uh, went you know, the exact same way, let's say, let's say, let's say Biden won and uh, all the extreme left wings won the house, won the Senate um, that could affect us. Right. We got, we would have to really be paying attention then. But as far as right now, we're, in my opinion, we're staying pretty moderate and the changes that are going to happen are likely going to be fairly minor. And those changes we just need to be aware of. We need to be able to be aware of what can we actually take advantage of? Uh, I know a lot of people are, are they get they get anxious, nervous, uh, one way or the other. You know, some people are super, super, um, you know, pro Trump. Some people are super, super pro Biden, and they think that if you know Trump wins, the world's going to be a mess, and if they think Biden wins, the world's going to be a mess. I I just don't think that way. I, I think that overall. Um, there's going to be good and bad that come out of either president becoming or either person becoming president. And I think, um, I think we just need to figure out how are we going to position our businesses around the slight changes that'll happen one way or the other. Uh, even if we you know keep the same president for a while, there's still market changes that you need to pivot and adjust to, uh, you know, as well. So it's yep. the same kind of thing. Like, you know, regardless of who's the president, uh, you still have to be ready to change uh, to the times. Yep. I, I, I tell you what, the, the biggest thing that I hope that what comes out of whatever results we have, whether it's Trump continuing to be our president or whether it's Biden becoming our president, my, my biggest hope is that um, we, we solve some of these um societal issues that are going on in our country some of the you know the the riots that continue to happen the protests that continue to happen the um the the race uh issues that continue to plague our country like i hope we can wrap our heads and hands around those issues and be able to work on bettering our country as a whole and i think again I, there might be different solutions depending on which side wins, but I'm hopeful that no matter which side wins, we can work on solving some of these issues for the better and making those positive changes that we need to make. And uh, man, I mean, crime in a lot of major cities has, has spiked and we just, we just need to get back in control of some of that and, you know, make the change that need to be make made. And also, um, get back to the good things that we had in place, you know? So I think, I think that's where, where we, I, I hope, hopeful that's where we go. So. Yeah. I mean, we're all human beings. We all want opportunities for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, we might disagree on just how to get there, but uh, we all want the same kind of end thing. 
life, liberty, and the pursuit. Did you come up with that on your own? No, no. I think oh. uh, one of the founding fathers said that. I, Thomas Jefferson. I forget oh. which one. But. <laughs> I was going to credit you. That was genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. I, I, you know, but look, overall, I'm optimistic. Things are going to be, things are going to be just fine. Um, I think, you know, this pandemic is still going on, uh, obviously, but I feel like, um, I feel like we are maybe not, maybe not in full control of it, but it, it, we are starting to wrap our heads around it a little bit more. Um, I feel like we're in a calmer place than we were back in, you know, March, April, May. So I I'm optimistic with the future and where it's going. Uh, we still got a long road ahead to, to fix some of the, the issues that we have, but um, I, I just, I, I'm not in that camp of, holy cow, if Biden wins, you know, we're, our country is, is gone as we know it, or same thing as, you know, if Trump wins, our country's gone as we know. I'm just not in that camp. I think, uh, I think we're still in a great place, and I think the U.S. is still the best country in the world to live in. Absolutely. I agree. And do business. And I think the opportunity is endless here. So. Yeah, especially with real estate. There's no other country that has the real estate opportunities that America has. Yeah, absolutely. So cool, man. Uh, you got anything else or anything that you think, you know, with, with Biden, how it could negatively or positively affect real estate? Yeah. I just want to say, hold off uh, panicking. It's going to be okay. <laughs> oh, the, the other thing too, uh, we didn't ch hit on opportunity zones. It'll be yeah. interesting to see opportunity zones and like, do those change? That was, you know, when, when you think about when people think about Trump, a lot of people automatically go, well, he's a, he's a Republican and, you know, so he's not doing any social services. Well, opportunity zones, they provide opportunity for investors, but they also provide growth and change in a market, in a neighborhood that needs that growth and change. So opportunity zones really are creating a lot of positive results in some of these uh, neighborhoods that are you're you know, kind of down and out. I look at a big, nice, beautiful building that was built in, in, um, on the East side of St. Paul, I brought in a lot of jobs, you know, took a, took a vacant property that's been vacant for 35, 38 years. Um, they built a nice uh, facility there. There's still some vacant land, but they took a big portion of that. I look at stuff like that and go, well, that's positive change. And, and, uh, you know, hopefully these opportunity zones can continue and maybe even be re-upped to where we can continue to develop in these opportunity zones. We'll see. I don't know where Biden is on, on that. Again, we don't even know if Biden's going to be our president, quite frankly, but we're just using this to say what would happen if he did. Um, and kind of seen, uh, think of the writing on the wall, but again, we're still, who knows? Um, but, you know, it'd be interesting to see what happens with these opportunity zones if, if they go away uh, because they were Trump's idea or if they continue on and, you know, Biden takes um, control of them and, and, you know, maybe continues them and, and maybe re-ups the, the funding for them. Yeah, I guess I don't know if he'll re-up them or not. I, I wouldn't expect him to try to end them early, um, but uh, yeah, that's hard to say. Yeah, and I don't know if there's um, there's true consensus on you know the results of it or, or maybe biden would would end it and you know create biden zones you know it's just to create something of his own you know a lot of presidents like to they don't want to especially different political parties you know they don't want the the same thing right but they essentially it's the same thing it's just a different, slightly different twist to, to give them credit instead of the past president credit. So we'll see, does, does he come up with something that is, you know, essentially the same? Um, we'll see. That'd be interesting. All right. All right, man. Well, hopefully we didn't get too political and, and, you know, piss people off, but, um, I'm, I'm actually a fairly apolitical person. <laughs> like, I don't, it doesn't, uh, I, again, like I said, like, I think, uh, I think the U S has a ton of opportunity. I think we are a country that, um, anybody can prosper if they want to, if they put the effort into it. And, uh, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So I want our country to, to do well and, and to continue to prosper. Uh, and I don't,
I don't think we're in jeopardy of that. Excellent. So awesome, man. Well, you take care and have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day Saturday. Thanks. You too. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. It's a rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like, uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out. And, uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.